The dog and I are wandering around the ruins of the Greater Willow Court Complex. The place closed down in 2000 and since then a lot of the buildings are like this one, left to rot. In the minds of a lot of people, Willow Court was always the rotten core at the heart of New Norfolk. If you take an apple and you excise the centre away, you're left with a piece of fruit with a hole in it and inside that vacuum what you'll usually find is strangeness. Situated 20 miles northwest of Hobart, the town of New Norfolk is home to about 6,000 people. The Willow Court complex sits within the town. The site is now a mixed use facility comprising of a restaurant, distillery, hotel, childcare centre, shops. But more than anything else, there is an array of vacant historic buildings near ruins that no one is sure exactly what to do with. And deeper within this all, you may be drawn to a teller's man. The original barracks building has been somewhat clean for tourists. But if you step towards it and you move in on it, you can find something in the corner. The numbers wall. Scratched in lead are the markings of extremely disorderly thinking, the numerical signature of a long gone anonymous patient. Back in the early period of Van Diemen's Land, when it was still not a separate colony and part of New South Wales, there was chaos. The Norfolk Island colony in the Pacific had failed. Hundreds of people living in the subtropical location defined by pine trees and jagged cliffs, were evacuated to the very different Elizabeth town. This migration saw the locality renamed New Norfolk. The English transported 76,000 convicts to Van Diemen's Land. Just 13% of these people were women. An unintended consequence of creating a society so heavily male was that the men were unable to form families, and in turn, they had no one to take care of them as they aged, a process brought on early due to the hard labour that they performed. In 1827, Governor Arthur requested that all invalid convicts be moved from across the island to New Norfolk. They would be placed there in tents and wooden huts until something more substantial could be built. In the 18th century, architects in Britain consciously began to revive the principles of 16th century Italian architect Andrea Palladio, a person responsible for many of Venice's finest structures. Palladio believed that a building could make people better. The proportions of a building, and not the decoration, are what make it harmonious. A building could be beautiful, regardless of whether it was made from marble, brick, concrete or wood. This drawing entitled Invalid Hospital, New Norfolk by Henry Melville is from 1833. Rising from the cleared bushland, glowing on the gentle hill. The barracks building was made by Tasmania's greatest architect, John Lee Archer. It was built with underskilled and forced convict labour. The rear half of the building was demolished decades ago. Fortunately, the main section remains. What Palladio had shown in Venice Archer demonstrated in Van Diemen's Land. Willow Court is the barracks building. The barracks building is Willow Court. The barracks building is a masterpiece. A masterpiece inside an architectural graveyard. To begin with, there was no road. The very first invalid sent from Hobart Town up the Derwent did so in an open boat, exposed to the wind and the weather for two nights and three days. The poorly clothed men arrived having been expected to bring their own bedding. Within a couple of years, women began to arrive also, as well as actual lunatic patients. The place became overcrowded pretty quickly and to alleviate this pressure, any patients that were not suffering psychiatrically were transferred away to other locations in the colony. 
This was how Willow Court became solely a psychiatric hospital. The dog and I are playing on these stairs, these three steps made of sandstone. They would have been used for getting off and then back onto carriages that were pulled by horses a long time ago. Now, I don't think it would have been here in this overgrown garden. It would have been out by the road or in a driveway, but I, I don't know. The only people that know what the place was like were those who lived and worked here. The only thing left to do now is to comb through the remnants. New Norfolk today is a fairly suburban place, but beginning at the barracks building, Willow Court expanded out as an asylum, firstly on the north side of the Lachlan River and then on the south side. Almost without exception, the buildings belonging to the Greater Hospital have either been vanished or damaged. Convict transportation to the island ended in 1853. In 1855, Willow Court administration was transferred from the military to the government. At this point, a series of cottages and wards were built and private patients, those who had not been convicts, began to be increasingly admitted. Hello ladies. This is the ladies cottage. It was built in the 1860s to give women a place to be accommodated away from all the blokes that are already out here. Now, it was built initially to have one floor on it and then about 30 years later, they put on a second story. It's just one of the buildings that are out here. There's a lot like it that are just falling apart. They're impressive buildings because of how much care was put into their construction and how old they are and they have some historical importance but there's no money to there's no money to keep them in good condition and maintain them there's definitely no money to refurbish them completely so we're just left with this situation we have all these interesting buildings that are falling apart and there's the reality is there's not much can be done about it because the state doesn't have the money to do, fix it up there's certainly the Town in Norfolk doesn't have the funds. So eventually they'll just fall apart even more than what they are now. It's just, just one of those realities of, of life. Hey pups. Frascati House was built by the Colonial Secretary John Burnett in 1834 at a time when the colonial governors favoured New Norfolk as a summer retreat. It later became part of the larger hospital site. The sun's just come out. We're here in the garden. It's not as well tended as it used to be, but you can still feel like it was an important place for important people once upon a time. This thing here that I'm trying to get a hold of is a uh, grapevine. There used to be a building near here and it caught fire a while ago and caused part of the vine to be destroyed, but it's still growing. Some people seem to think that it might be the oldest grapevine in Tasmania. There's also some inconclusion also about exactly what type of grape it's meant to produce. This thing here, it looks like maybe it was a medieval witch dipping device, something truly cruel and nasty, but it wasn't, it's part of a playground that used to be here for kids. It was a rope swing, or I should say a tyre swing, a bit of rope with a tyre on the bottom. The tyre's gone and the rope's gone and uh, all the fun's gone too. So you're just left wondering and wondering about all the badness that might have gone on. And before too long, everything that you look at starts to take a meaning that's maybe even darker than it needs to be. So I'm over here on the dark side of the building, in the shadows, on this side of the bars. Through the bars, we can see some, what I think of volcanic stones, have been used to block up a hole in the wall. Now that hole led to a kind of tunnel that went from inside the house to outside. There's another tunnel 
around Willow Court, a bigger one that was rediscovered a few years ago. And since people found it, it's triggered a lot of people to start questioning what it was actually used for. In 2012, scheduled roadworks on Burnett Street uncovered a ventilation shaft. A tunnel does in fact run from Willow Court under the avenue, then Burnett Street all the way to the Doan River next to the Bush Inn. The Bush Inn lays a claim to being the oldest continually operated pub in Australia. Imaginations about the tunnel's purpose arose. It was used to transport crazed convicts without them being seen by the common folk. Or it was used by soldiers so they could move between Willow Court and the pub again without being seen. The State Archive, however, provides a more likely explanation. New Norfolk was built on the large Derwent River, but Willow Court itself was placed within New Norfolk to be close to the smaller Lachlan River. The barracks building had been drawing water to drink from the Lachlan River while also discharging effluent into the same stream. This caused typhoid. The tunnel is in fact a brick barrel drain. It was built in 1834 to discharge sewage into the Derwent. The records also show that Willow Court became connected to a newer, more modern system and in turn the barrel drain became obsolete. There does however remain a mystery about this device. The brickline passage is 10 metres deep in places. And no one seems to know if it was tunnelled out or if it was made by cutting a trench. The drain that is also a tunnel has caved in several times over the years. In 1920, a section of the tunnel collapsed. The collapse was described as so large that it almost engulfed an entire horse. <laughs> this 1854 painting by Canud Bull is called New Norfolk from the north bank of the Derwent. The bucolic scene could be pulled from a children's story. The sky is clement. Men are fishing on the bank. A sailboat is moving downstream. To the right is the wood bridge, the first bridge built across the Derwent. But behind the surface and beyond the frame, there were other things occurring. The dog's got a stick and uh, up there's the wall. Pretty serious business, this wall. Now, they put that wall there because they want to keep people inside. Back in the day, it could be decided that you were crazy, you're insane, that you were nuts because maybe you're a bloke that was a bit too erratic or a woman that was a bit too promiscuous. If you were labelled as insane, which is a fairly nebulous idea sometimes, these walls no longer had doors. These walls were one-way vowels. Once you went behind them, you weren't able to come back out of. It's like a big trap. Out of sight, primitive attempts at psychiatric care were performed. Isolation tanks, cold water therapy, bloodletting, restraining trousers with legs sewn together, holeless sleeves, a kind of glove that you could not subtract your hand from, and the old straight jacket. At mealtimes, patients had to eat using forks with minimised prongs, a knife so blunt that they were basically flat spoons. Religion was totally integrated into the social fabric of life in Van Diemen's land. It was a spiritual island, and religion did not stop at the lock gate of the asylum. It was all the way inside, over the walls, and through the doors, and inside the minds of the patients. In 1854, the Colonial Times reported that a riot had broken out. Patients wielding sticks and pieces of furniture had managed to overwhelm the military staff. At this point, they had to call in a carist. A carist is the kind of person that no longer exists in modern Australia. The carist was a man who people believed had a particular special connection to the Christian God. The riot was only ended when he came into the building and spoke to the inmates, talking them into submission. As a side note, this type of person is where we get the word charisma. We've got this 
Bedford fire truck belonging to the New Norfolk Fire Brigade. There's a one, two, three combi vans. Back there, there's a truck with an old crane attachment rusting on the back of it. And then there are these palm trees. Now they look out of sight, more so than the wrecks. It makes sense that there'd be wrecks of cars here because the buildings are wrecks too. Everything's falling apart. Everything's kind of interesting, but also not super appealing all at the same time. Church of St Matthew built in 1823 is the oldest in Tasmania and its cemetery is one of the burial grounds where patients' bodies were interred. So there's about 2,000 people buried in here. Sometimes there's multiple bodies in the same graves. We don't really know too much about the people that were here on an individual level, just like we don't really know too much about anybody from the past. One thing that we do know is that even if you had relatives that were still alive in Van Diemen's land, they may not have come and collected your remains once you'd passed. There's probably a bunch of different reasons why people might not have done this. One, there was a lot of stigma attached to having mental illness back in the day. Uh, the second reason might be just affordability. People were pretty poor in the early period of Tasmania. And a third reason, maybe it was all just too hard. Once your loved ones or your distant relatives or whoever they might be, your friends, once they'd gone to Willow Court, you'd already said goodbye. Once they were in there, it was, in a sense, emotionally, like they'd already died. In the early 1880s, there was a recommendation the site at New Norfolk be abandoned and that a new hospital be built in Hobart. Two places were suggested in Prince of Wales Bay, where modern day Goodwood now is. But the prospect was rejected. This is an early Tasmanian cultural example of something better almost happening, but not. Up until the 1890s, psychiatric patients were still being kept at the female factory in South Hobart and the Campbell Street Jail. Eventually these people were also moved up to Willow Court. Once all the patients had been concentrated in New Norfolk, Tasmania had its development stunted by two world wars and a depression. Some new facilities were built but overall the place was probably going backwards. In 1962, the Cunningham Dax report was presented to State Parliament. It suggested that part of the original barracks building be turned into a museum, with a proposed modernist hospital tower erected behind it. This vision was never realised, but other recommendations within the report were swiftly taken up. The rear quadrangle of the barracks building was demolished, as were other things. Construction of the clock tower building began in 1887. The archways and vaulted ceiling could have been medieval. The clock itself came from the abandoned Port Arthur site. It was wound every Monday, but rarely it told the correct time. The tower itself was so well built that it took two blasts to bring it to crumbs. Lachlan Park was built on vacant land already owned by the hospital on the other side of the Lachlan River, opposite to Willow Court. Work kicked off in 1954 with the building of the steam plant. The actual wards were erected in stages from 1957 to 1966. Each building was designed to house patients with different needs, which was a fairly new concept at the time. The wards themselves were all based on the pavilion model of asylums already used elsewhere, internationally. In 1967, when it was all finished, the name Royal Derwent Hospital was granted by Royal Decree. 
There were lots of these buildings, each doing different things, but today almost all of them have been demolished, save three or four of the very most curious. The nurse's home now operates as a motel. Its six-storey tower is the tallest building in New Norfolk. The once vibrant social centre has now become unused. Pleasure, my pleasure in other people's leisure. The pool back there is empty of water and it's empty of swimmers and the theatre inside, well, there's been no plays put on there for two decades. It's just a very big building that has value, that has been held in private hands and it's just gonna sit there and over time, the land will probably go up in value, but the actual building, well, at this point, just needs to be all torn down. It was probably worth saving at one point, but I'm imagining that that date is years and years in the past. It doesn't feel too nice being here. There's a lot of broken glass on the ground, so I'm holding the dog up so it doesn't hurt his paws. This was a prison within the Greater Willow Court facility, Ward 10, and it contains an optical illusion. This device that I'm standing inside of was that optical illusion. It was designed to give the patients some peace, but also provide security for everybody that lived in the area because unfortunately there were some very unwell and quite dangerous people residing here. Ward 10 used to be surrounded by a perimeter fence. Any cars that entered had to go through a series of gates. Maximum security, male patients only, all ages usually very disturbed and often prone to violence. Inside the ward was the Ha Ha Wall. The sunken barricade created a vertical barrier while preserving an uninterrupted view of the landscape beyond. Since filled in with soil, part of the wall is still visible, but it's most visible from above, where its shadow is cast up from underneath the grass. Willow Court used to have an emergency escape siren and it was sounded every Friday at midday as a test. Everyone knew exactly what it sounded like. On weekends and school holidays, if the siren sounded, kids might get on their bikes and ride over to see where the escape might have taken place. The line between treatment and discipline was thin, as was the line between patient and inmate. If you put your foot out of line, there was always the big horse needles, an injection of sedatives that could zonk a person out for days. Electroconvulsive therapy was also in fashion, and it was used in other ways too, as punishment for bad behaviour. If a whole group of patients was to be misbehaving, they could be lined up against the wall, each of them given a mouthpiece to hold between their teeth and then whilst still standing up, they'd be shocked one after the other. This was done to adults and children. Towards the end of the 20th century, a transition occurred away from the institutional care to community care. When all the patients were gone and the facility was closed, the place was the oldest psychiatric hospital still standing in its original location in Australia. For some of the people that lived here, it wasn't just a facility, it was their home. And some people lived here for most of their lives. 
It was all they knew. The sad reality is that some people didn't actually survive long after leaving. Mistakes with their medication were made. Failures to integrate into the new system occurred. The chapel here, well, that's turning into a ruin. There's thorns and plant life everywhere and the front door has been blocked off with a piece of wood with screws put in. We can't get inside and we can't go back into the past either. As desolate as all of this appears, it's something to be optimistic about. The abandonment of Willow Court is a big success story because in doing so, it showed that as a society, we'd come up with a better way of taking care of each other. If Willow Court was still operational today, that would be something to be pessimistic about, but it's been closed for 20 years. And in that time, all the people that haven't had to come here have had better lives because of it. It's very easy to think, if you look back through a corridor of time, to think that progress is like a ball on a wire moving in one direction, but of course it's not. Progress, if it's possible at all, is usually more like wading through a swamp. Invalid Barracks, Colonial Hospital, New Norfolk Madhouse, Her Majesty's Lunatic Asylum, Mental Diseases Hospital, Lachlan Park, Royal Derwent Hospital, all different names for the same one place. Willow Court. After his defeat at the Battle of Waterloo, Napoleon Bonaparte was exiled by the English to the island of St Helena. Separated from family and friends, he was unable to participate in a humanistic life. He died six years later in 1821, barely into his fifties. After his passing, people travelled to his tomb and they took cuttings from a willow tree growing near the head of his grave. It's understood that Lady Jane Franklin came into possession of such a thing. She planted two weeping willows that gave Willow Court its name. In 1962, those trees were axed from the earth. The willows are gone, and Napoleon is gone, and the people of Willow Court are gone too. And they're all equal now. Smoke on the wind. <laughs>